What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's the Game Week 36 preview. So I'm going to go through the latest we've got on Edison and then answer a bunch of your questions as well. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with the latest on Edison. Now, this hasn't come from Pep Guardiola or Man City, but it is quite a positive update that City Extra tweeted yesterday with information from a journalist that said, Edison will return to Man City training in the next few days after tests have not shown an injury to the goalkeeper. So there is a chance he could be back for game week 36, if not hopefully for game week 37. So for anyone that owns Edison, especially if you were hoping to bench boost with him, it could be, but th this does sound like pretty good news, right? Obviously we'll have to wait and see what Pep says on Friday in his press conference. I won't be able to record final thoughts after the press conferences this week because we got a Friday deadline, but anything that comes up, I'll discuss in the deadline stream. But basically, hold fire on transferring him out and don't bring Ortega in just yet. It's probably a little bit too early to do that because even if Edison's not fine for 36 but is likely to be back for 37, that is still a pretty good update, especially if you're looking to bench boost. A few people asked me why I said the other day about doing Edison to Ortega this week rather than playing Petrovic. That was in the specific scenario where Pep ruled Edison out for the season and you're on bench boost 37. So either way, you know you're making that transfer to get Ortega in. And rather than do it in 37, you just do it in 36 because you'd rather have a Man City goalkeeper this week than a Chelsea one. It's really not a big deal. If you wanted to play Petrovic instead and then make the transfer in 37, you could absolutely do that. But if you were dead set on doing Edison to Ortega and we knew that Edison was out for the season, that's the reason to do it a week early. But at this point, that doesn't matter. This is a positive update. Let's see what Pep says on Friday. But we might still have Edison for game week 37. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is a different conversation, but he could be fit. All right, let's get into some of your questions. So what are the pros and cons of De Bruyne versus Foden? Now, the main advantage to going for De Bruyne is he's more of a differential, right? If you think they're going to score similar points and you've got the money, you go for the guy with less ownership because that's the one that can boost you up the ranks even more. Now, it's worth saying people are not stupid, right? Especially after how well he's done recently. De Bruyne is averaging 10 points per match over the last four game weeks. They are bringing him in. And if you go to midfielders on the FPL page and sort it by transfers in for this week, De Bruyne is the most transferred in at 140,000. So that ownership is going to go up. But Foden is already massively ahead, and he's still been brought in by 100,000 FPL managers this week as well. So either way, even with the transfers in for De Bruyne, his ownership is still going to remain lower. The main advantage to Foden is he's cheaper, right? So that might enable you a better overall squad. In terms of minutes, I actually think they're probably going to be quite similar between now and the end of the season, as long as they can remain fit and there's no illness and stuff like that maybe you just edge the minutes towards Foden because of what's happened previously. De Bruyne obviously was out for quite a while with an, uh, with an injury, but he's been back for a good while now, and there's no European matches or anything like that. And actually, his minutes recently have been pretty good. So 88, 71, 80, and 90 over the last four game weeks. The only real issue is game week 37, which I've spoken about before, where the Fulham game is on Saturday and the Spurs game is on Tuesday. But I think there's every chance that De Bruyne could start both of them, but he's probably going to come off early. But the same thing could happen with Foden. In terms of who's more likely to get you a return, it's probably De Bruyne ever so slightly. But Foden's much more likely to go and get you a goal, which are worth more points. I think if these two get the same minutes, they are very, very close in terms of what you should expect points-wise. But with De Bruyne, you get a big differential. But obviously, you have to pay more for that. So if that's going to affect your team too much, I would just go for Foden, even though his ownership's super high. If not, I like De Bruyne. Not many people... Well, 140,000 people have brought him in already this week. But I don't think that's going to go super high because people just can't afford him or they don't have a Man City slot. So if you can get him in, he's definitely the differential. I just don't think you can be completely shocked if De Bruyne does get benched. But honestly, it's the same with any Man City player. Could Foden miss one of the last four? It's possible. I don't see it if he's fit. You just never know. So would you transfer out a double game week 37 player to a player with a better fixture this week? For example, Son to Saka. And I think the short answer is no. I don't think I would do this. It just feels like trying to be too clever and just asking for trouble. Because as soon as you get an injury or a suspension next week, you've then got that to deal with, plus this pre-book transfer. And it could end up with you having to take hits. I mean, if you had to play... Saka against Man United away, it's not the end of the world. But in this specific example, 
you've already got the double game weaker and you're choosing to remove them. And unless Saka absolutely smashes it this week, it's not going to feel great if you then got other transfers next week to deal with. Now, I did kind of touch on this yesterday, right? In an ideal world where you've got no transfer planned for 36 or 37, the rest of your squad is absolutely perfect. This could work out nicely because Saka is better in 36 than Son. But I'd rather have Son in 37. So I just think it's not something I would mess around with because issues can come up. Like, look at last week, right? Gusto is a doubt going into the double game week. Obviously, some people have held him for quite a while. Cher picks up an injury. Edison picks up an injury. Van Heck might be out for the season. You know, these are all issues that could then come up between game weeks 36 and 37. Obviously, Cher, Edison might be fine, but they also might not, right? And you don't want that going into 37, especially if you're looking to bench boost. So I don't think I would do it. But obviously, if nothing goes wrong, this could be worth a lot of points because Saka is better than Son this week and then you get to get the double game weaker back. I just I just don't think I would do it. Like I said, it, just, it feels like something that is almost certainly most of the time going to go wrong. And who knows? Maybe Son outscores Saka this week. Maybe Arsenal beat Bournemouth 5-0 and Saka gets one assist like he did against Sheffield United. You, you just don't know. So I don't think I would do it. So with so many teams having similar attacks, who are the best differentials? Now, some of these players we've already mentioned, if you wanted to bet against the double game weeks, you could look at players like Saka and Havertz. Their ownership will definitely go up in game week 38, especially if the title race is still on. But at the moment, people aren't going to be looking there for the most part because they're going to concentrate on double game week players. You've also got Kevin De Bruyne, who we discussed, versus Phil Foden. His ownership is going to go up this week, but it's still going to be lower than a lot of those other popular players like Foden himself and then the rest of them is kind of how differential do you really want to go like I've put Callum Wilson on the list I don't think you can go there right now but if we saw him start with Isaac in game week 36 that could be a really tempting differential going into 37 so he's one to keep an eye on Jao Pedro's ownership is super low and I think his minutes are going to be pretty good for Brighton over the remaining four games they've got and he's on penalties as well is whether or not you trust Brighton to kind of turn things around because right now they are not playing particularly well they're not getting great results I mean last two games they've conceded seven goals to City and Bournemouth and scored zero they only scored one against Burnley I mean none against Arsenal either but fair enough right they're a great defense none against Brentford one against Liverpool one against Forest. They're not scoring a huge amount of goals right now, but they do have okay fixtures. Three home games in the last four, Villa, Chelsea, and Man United, and the other game in 37 is Newcastle away. So I don't know. I mean, I still, I still kind of see Brighton as a team that at any point could kind of turn it on and get a few goals under De Zerbe, but I don't know, those fixtures on paper are not... I mean, they're all at home. Uh, sorry, three of them are at home. And look, Man United defence hasn't been great. Chelsea can be got at, but they're not easy fixtures, I would say. But someone like Jao Pedro is super low owned. So if you want to go for different... Like, I think that's always that's always the thing to consider. When people say differential, sometimes they just want someone who they know is great, but slightly lower owned than everyone else. And some people want like a, what I would call a true differential where no one's looking at them right now and they have the potential... But it's maybe not that likely. And I think that's kind of where Jao Pedro and maybe even Pascal Gross fit in. Trippier, I would keep an eye on in terms of fitness. He could be back for 37. But again, like Cannon Wilson, he's not a player you can go for this week. And then you've got Man United players. Bruno Fernandes is the most uh, popular attacker for Man United at the moment. You could go for Hoyland if you need a striker or Garnacho. I mean, if you look at the template forward line right now, it's probably Haaland, Isaac, and one more. A lot of people have gone for Jackson. You don't necessarily need Jackson for 37. One of the reasons that a lot of people went for him is because he also doubled in, uh, doubled in 35. But if you don't already have Jackson, he's got as many fixtures now as any other team with a double in 37. So you could go for João Pedro or Hoyland over him as a bit of a differential. And even Garnacho now, you know, in the kind of top 100k or whatever, has got lower ownership than someone like Bruno Fernandes. And he's, he's a lot cheaper as well. So that might enable you to make all the other moves you want to make in game week 38 or whatever it might be. So they're the kind of players that I'm looking at. I mean, which ones would I have the most confidence in? I mean, Garnacho, I think, like his ownership's not super low, but it's definitely lower than Fernandez. Two home games in the double, Palace away and Brighton away either side of that. It's okay. It's okay. I'm really struggling to find a 
a super low owned differential that I'm actually confident in. I can find you loads of players with low ownership. Confidence is a different matter. I think Callum Wilson could be, but we need to see a start. I quite like João Pedro and Hoyland instead of Jackson going forward. But as someone that's got Jackson, I'm not looking to really get rid of him. Otherwise, you're probably looking at maybe single game weekers, which I'm going to mention a little bit later when I when I discuss a free hit 37 question. But players like Ivan Tony, you know, Brentford's last three fixtures aren't that bad. Chris Wood as well, someone like that. Ollie Watkins, if you want another forward as well. That's who I'd be looking at. Uh, midfielders possibly in Burmo. I think that's about it, honestly. I mean, look, lots of managers are highly engaged these days. They they know who who the best picks are, and that's why it's so hard to find differentials at the moment. But also because there's a double in thirty seven, you feel like you've got to attack that, and then and the number of players you can go for in those teams that are nailed on is quite low. But minutes wise, I think Garnacho, Gross, Hoylan and Jao Pedro are probably your best bets, or you go for Arsenal and just ignore the doubles. So what should we do with Trippier? I've had him since wildcard 30 with a plan to bench boost in game week 37. So this is the latest we have on Trippier from Craig Hope, who's a journalist that covers Newcastle. He said, Newcastle hope Kieran Trippier will return for the final three games of the season. Remember, that's not three game weeks, right? They've got four matches left, so that doesn't include game week 36. He's currently in Dubai working with a physio and fitness coach. Brighton on May the 11th is the targeted return. So that would be the first game of double game week 37. Now the problem is, if he's not in the game week 36 squad at all, are they just going to throw him straight back into the 11? That would be my concern. I think for me to have any confidence in Trippier going into game week 37, I'd want to see minutes, even if it's just 10 minutes off the bench in game week 36. I guess the only thing you can do, like if you're not relying on him this week and you've got three other defenders you can play, I would just hold him and then wait and see the latest information ahead of game week 37. Because the thing about Trippier, he's one of the biggest differentials if you can get him on the pitch, right? Because not many people own him at this point and a lot of people are looking at other defenders in game week 37. And Newcastle's fixtures in that double are not terrible, right? Brighton at home, Man United away. Trippier could definitely get attack and returns in those. And who knows, after I've just said about the lack of Brighton goals recently, maybe even a clean sheet against Brighton as well. Is Brentford away last day of the season? Maybe not a great fixture. But if Trippier is going to play, you know he can go and get you those attack and returns on top. So I think if you've come this far since Wildcard 13, your team looks okay this week, I'd probably just hold on to him. But I've got to be honest, my, my confidence in him getting two starts in game week 37 is low. And if he gets no minutes in 36, I think that's a potential problem. At that point, whether or not, whether or not you sell him before 37 really depends on whether you've got a spare transfer. Like if Trippier, if Eddie Howe says that, you know, he's good, he's back, you know, he's going to be in the squad for the Brighton game, and it would take a hit to remove him, maybe you keep hold of him. But if you've got a spare transfer, you probably just sell him to someone you know is going to get two starts. So it's unfortunate if you've held him this long. But there is a, a glimmer of hope, I would say, for game week 37. But ideally, you need to see minutes in 36. So what's an acceptable number of hits to take for bench boost 37? A caveat being that most of my issues are in defense, so lower upside. Essentially, I would take as many hits as you need to get out 15 playing players in game week 37 you're using your bench boost the whole point is to have the whole squad playing and it's very unlikely if you save that bench boost to 38 that things are going to be any better so however many injuries you've got that is at least how many hits i would take there's not a number where it becomes unacceptable some people get a little bit unluckier some people may have wildcarded in 30 and have tried to go quite a long time until 37 there's just issues that have started to crop up minus four minus eight minus 12 minus 16 Whatever it is, if you've got an injured player for game week 37, I would get rid of them for someone that's not injured. It gets a little bit different if, say, you've got someone who's a little bit of a doubt going into 37, but will probably play the second game. If you think they're going to be a good option in that game they play, and you can't bring anyone else in better, I probably just wouldn't take the hit. And if it's someone like, I don't know, just as an example, right, Harry Maguire, who, if he stays fit, will probably play both games in 37, but you're looking at it with Arsenal at home, Newcastle at home, thinking there's no chance of a clean sheet there. I'm going to take a hit. I'm not sure that would be 
worth it because you know Maguire is going to play both games. There is some attacking potential there as well. I think that's less of a justification to take the hit. But there are injuries starting to crop up. And if we get more going into 37, I will take as many hits as I need to get 15 players for that bench boost. If you've got a single game weaker and you want to upgrade to a doubler, again, that's a little bit less, you know, a little bit less justification to take the hit. But if you're going to get an extra fixture and they're better in 38, you could maybe justify that as well. So I don't think anything is completely out of the question. But for most people, I'd say minus four, minus eight, minus 12 is probably the most they're going to need to, you know, sort that bench boost for 37. But some of you might need more. So I'm on free hit 37. Who are your top punts for game weeks 36 and 38? Now I'm going to go through them in a second, but just one thing to mention first of all, obviously the advantage to free hit 37 is you can just bring in as many double game week players as you want and can just ignore them outside of that when other people are going to have to use transfers to bring them in. But it doesn't mean you have to ignore them as your punts for 36 and 38. So for example, Newcastle have got Burnley away in 36 and Brentford away in 38 you might look at that and think well gordon and Isaac could be good options similar with man city they've got wolves at home this week and west ham at home in 38 that looks pretty good to me even though you're going to be able to free hit them in as well on 37 it's not the end of the world if you free hit and a couple of the players you keep on that free hit are ones you already own so i just wanted to mention that otherwise i think we've talked about arsenal enough but they've got bournemouth for home this week and Everton at home in 38 as long as that title race is still on they look good and even if it's not I still expect Arteta to put out a fairly strong side so Odegaard Havertz much lower ownership than Saka but Saka still a really good option and then there's a few forwards in there so Ollie Watkins his ownership is super low at the moment obviously still going for the golden boot Villa do have Europe and stuff like that but they're also chasing top four and Watkins never gets rested so you'd expect him to play and for Villa, let me just see here. It is, it's two away games, I think. I can't find them now. Brighton away. And then in 38, it is Crystal Palace away. So ideally, you'd have a home fixture in there. But those two fixtures on paper aren't terrible. And we know how good Watkins is. And a lot of people have got rid of him. So I do like him. I really like Chris Wood as an option as well. Now, he his um, recent returns haven't been great. So he's blanked, like Man City, fair enough, blank. And he did have two great opportunities, at least in that game to score. He missed basically an open goal, absolute sitter. Um, blanked against Everton and Wolves. But before that, he'd scored four games in a row. And the thing I quite like about Forrest is in game week 36, again, it's two away games, unfortunately. But in 36, it's Sheffield United away. And in 38, it's Burnley away. So in terms of teams you'd like to face, Sheffield United and Burnley is a two two game week punt essentially because you can free hit in between i really like chris wood and you, and also you can apply that to other players from forest like gibbs white as well if you, if it's a midfielder you're looking at going for but he's definitely an option uh, and brentford as well so ivan tony back now you've got in burmo playing too they've got fulham at home this week and in 38 it is another home game which is newcastle at home which is not easy but i think it's a combination of fixtures fulham and newcastle both at home that is pretty decent. I, I quite like the Chris Wood punt, to be honest, getting to play Sheffield United and Burnley. The only thing to say is they are massive matches for Forest because they are fighting a relegation battle right now. And I guess you just don't know how those kind of games are going to go, especially if it's not decided by game week 38. But against Burnley, you know, will that be open or will it be cagey? You'd imagine it's more so going to be cagey, but it doesn't mean that Chris Wood can't score in that in that game still. So I quite like him. I think Chelsea, again, they double in 37, but their, their games outside of that are West Ham at home and Bournemouth at home. Not bad at all. I don't think there's anyone else that I've I've missed. Like Everton have got Luton this week, but in 38 it's Arsenal, so I, I would ignore them. Uh, Liverpool have got Spurs at home and Wolves at home. I mean, people are selling Diaz and Salah and Darwin in, you know, in their drove. So, I mean, if you've got the money... Salah is, I think Salah will come back in and play this week. I don't think Klopp will leave it as it, you know, happened against West Ham. I think he'll be back in. And they're going to want to go out on a high for Klopp, I think, overall. And you'd hope any issues that are going on there, they would patch up. I don't think Spurs at home and Wolves at home are that bad. So Salah could be the ultimate differential at the moment. But if you need someone cheaper, I think you're probably looking at the likes of Watkins, uh, Chris Wood in Burmo, Tony 
and players like that if you've enjoyed the video make sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button rate five stars if you listen on podcast because of the friday deadline i'm going to do team selection tomorrow even though the chelsea and spurs game won't have happened And then I'm going to do final thoughts on Friday morning before the press conferences just to go through any other information we've got, any fallout from the Chelsea Spurs game and uh, obviously answer some more questions as well. And then for 37 and 38, the deadlines are Saturday and Sunday. So we'll be back to the regular schedule of content for the remaining two game weeks of the season. So thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me for this one. And I'll catch you again tomorrow.